Second John chapter 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. Abide not and abide in. If you didn't know how hard this message is to get out, this message somebody's trying to stop. It's important. Just by the defenses. This is the third time trying to make Abide not, abide in. The 46th lesson of nine verses in the Bible. A very important book, Second John is, we've studied and continue to study. Whosoever, whosoever transgresses 183 times in 163 verses, which is... 160, 163 verses have whosoever. 20 of them have more, two or more in that verse. Matthew 5, 19, we find whosoever breaketh and teaches the commandments or shall do and teach the commandments. Second John, there is an assessment to all classes of people one that do and those that do not. Whosoever. But verse 8. Look to yourselves that we, John including himself, lose not those things which we, John including himself, have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever, right into the elect lady, right into her children that are walking in the Lord, John is writing this epistle and addressing whosoever to a saved group of Christians. And also can be addressed to lost individuals. Whosoever goes far to extreme of male, female, young, old, Whatever race, whatever color, whatever shape, whosoever leaves no one out. John 3.16. John 3.16. The Gospel of John 3.16. For God so loved, now that's important there, later on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, not, believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Here the whosoever is directed to any lost person. You have no name before Calvary. You're lost and under your father Satan John 8 44. So when I preach on the streets, I usually try to start with John 3 16. I am addressing everybody. Whoever and whatever. Whoever can hear the words. I'm addressing you. You can't say, oh, salvation is not for me. You have an elderly woman come up to you. Oh, I'm a vast sinner. You're whosoever. And God loved you. And God died for you. Now there's another whosoever. Revelation 20. We saw it to the, to the lost man. Again we're going to see it to the lost man. Revelation 20 verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's not me. I have a name in the book of life. I have a new name in glory. My name is written in the book. I'm not a whosoever no more. That whosoever goes back to John 3, 16. And those who have not received the gospel that Christ died for your sin, was buried according to the scriptures, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That whosoever is directed to lost people. 
John's whosoever is written to save people. A group of all lost people, no name. So you can't say, okay, well, I'm, I'm Eric. I don't see the word Eric in the Bible, so it can't be talking about me. You can't say that. Because you're no longer Eric, you're whosoever. You can't say as a Christian, well, you know, my name's not Paul, so I don't need to follow. I'm not a John, James, or, or Peter. Yeah, but whosoever, that's you. Anybody that fits, lost or saved. Whosoever has no classification. John 3.16, love was to the whole world. To anyone, whosoever believeth, salvation is established. And as we saw the other side of the coin, Revelation 20, verse 15, that whosoever here are individu individuals that rejected John 3, 16. They didn't put their name in the Lamb's Book of Life when they came to Calvary. They rejected. So it falls into two classes here. Those that do and those that do not. Those who have not and those that will not. Obedience to John 3.16 is critical to internal hope for anybody. Revelation 20 is critical for your damnation into the lake of fire which burns forever. Don't come to Jesus as whosoever. Come to now, away from Calvary with a name, your name, written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Don't continue to be a whosoever. And other verses for that, John 8, 34, 12, 46, Romans 10, 13, 1 Corinthians 11, 27, 1 John 3, 9. Whosoever, anyone, any person, whoever. Now we see back in John, whosoever transgresseth. And you've seen the sign. No trespassing. When you transgress against God, he has a very fine line between holiness and wickedness. And when you transgress God is when you cross from over from holiness to sin. To him that knows the sin, no, to him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. When you cross over to sin, when you cross over to wickedness, when you cross over to the world, when you cross over to Satan, you have transgressed. You have defiled God. Transgress in the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, which is a wonderful dictionary. Unlike your modern dictionaries today, this is the first dictionary that Webster's put out. And believe it or not, this dictionary holds scripture. You can find this online. You can find it uh you can get a printed version, a little bit costly. You can find an internet search. Some Bible programs have, like mine. Mine has the, the Webster's 1828. It's a wonderful dictionary. It doesn't have it on the, the, the dot com and all that other junk. As far as I know, it does not have any cussing. But it does have scripture. It is something you need to have some way, some form as a reference in your library. But transgression, to pass over, to beyond any limit, to surprise, all have sinned, all have transgressed, Romans 3, 10, and 23. Look at that, just close to scripture, tells you. All, listen, I'm a saved sinner. I trespass what God wants me to do. We're going to see that in a minute and also. Whosoever transgresseth, that's me. A saved Christian, 2 John, that's written to me. Now, I'm not always transgressing. I do do right. But when I do, that fits all Christians. Whether you're in a Baptist church, whether you're in a Catholic church, whether you're out of church, or can't get to a church. And the next important word, whosoever transgresseth and abideth, to stop there, abide. Again, 1828 Webster's Dictionary, rest or dwell. To continue permanently or in the same state, to be firm and immovable, to remain, to continue. 
And we may not even finish this verse. I'm probably for sure. Like I said, this is the third time I've done this, trying to get this out. We have come to a meat doctrine. This requires a fork and a steak knife and some steak sauce. This is, might be hard for the new Christian. But I said in the beginning, these studies, when you go back and find them, we're going to do from milk to steak. We're going to do all that John leads us to talk about. And we're going to stop and study. This is the 46th lesson. I'm in no hurry. And some of you may say, well, nine verses and 46 lessons. Have you learned? Abide. Let's look at abiding in the Bible. Because John now says, Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever, anybody, any Christian, John or the elect lady, whoever, talking about rewards, talking about that you can lose a reward. We went through that study. Size the fact is you can lose a reward. Don't lose your reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. Doctrine. Get that in a minute. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. Get that. We're going to look at that in a minute. We're going to break down what John has said through the Gospel of John. Scripture with Scripture. I'm not giving you my philosophy. I'm not giving you anybody's philosophy. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit inspiration. The right. Now, Mark 6:10. Gospel of Mark 6:10. Bide. He said unto them, In what place soever ye enter in a house, there abide till ye depart from the place. He sent the disciples out on an evangelistic tour to the promised land, to the Jews, to Israel. And he sends the twelve out. He says, listen, when you come into a city, a town, or a village, and they say, come into my house. Let all your needs fall upon this house. Food, shelter, bed, whatever. Let it be on us. And Jesus is telling them, stay in that house. Abide in that house. Dwell. Rest. Let all your needs be upon that. Don't go house to house staying. What man goes on a vacation and gets a hotel and he makes the reservations for the hotel. He goes to the hotel. He checks in. And he stays at another hotel. Or stays at a motel. No. Abide in that place that's providing for you. Don't go here to here. And... Depart from that place. Till ye depart from that place. Stay there to the checkout time. As you would with a hotel or a motel. You go in. You check out. And whatever day it is. They say check out at 3 p.m. You got to be out by 3 p.m. Follow the rules. Obey the rules. To obedience. It's not taken advantage of. So that's one abiding. And that's abiding no. You're going to move on. Stay in the one place until it's time to leave. Like I said, the hotel is a great illustration. It wasn't their home, but they were a guest. Stay in one room pending its checkout time. One can move about. You go here to here, you, you know, build in a building. But when it comes to your dwelling, when it comes to your lodging, there's only one place. Now, we as Christians, our home is New Jerusalem. We're pilgrims. We're allowed to go here, there, everywhere. We're allowed to go to work. We're allowed to go to certain entertainment. We're allowed to go to the grocery store. We're allowed to go here and there. But this is not our dwelling place. There's a checkout time called death or the rapture. 
But while we're here, we're evangelists. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. But remember, our dwelling is in heaven. And when it's checkout time, don't fight the Lord, just go. Christians are to remain unto death. It's similar to the wedding vows, unto death do us part. In a marriage, you bide together, you rest, you dwell, the marriage bed, you continually and continue permanent in the same state, marriage, firm and immovable, to remain and continue. That is to be our walk as Christians to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to abide in Christ, stay. But like Demas, he went off. He stepped off. He went to another place to stay called the world. I believe it was Thessalonica. Demas changed residence. One day we will be transported to our real home. We are to settle and abide forever in New Jerusalem. This is our home, not America. The Bible says we are ambassadors. Ambassadors visit and lodge, but this is not their home. So we're not really abiding in the world. We're just lounging through. We're just traveling. Now, another important thing about abiding. John 14, 16. John, the writer of the gospel, is the same writer of 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. So John chapter 14 Talking about abiding. John 14, 16. John 14, 16. But the Holy, but the Comforter, capital C, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's the Holy Spirit that comes of the Father. Now let's see what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Same chapter, verse number 16. That was verse 26, now verse 16. And I will pray to Father and he, will, he shall give you Another Comforter, capital C, that he may abide with you forever. Now, how's that abiding? We get a Comforter after the resurrected Jesus Christ. It goes to the right hand of the Father. The Comforter, the Holy Ghost, comes from the Father. And he does not settle. He abides abodes in us forever for the Holy Spirit that imbinds inside a Christian there is never checkout time you become his permanent home and when we go home to be with the Lord then the Holy Spirit is at home. The Holy Spirit indwells in glory and he indwells in the bodies, in the hearts of born again Bible believing Christians. Never leave. You cannot leave your soul because the Bible just said that comforter stays in you. You tell me if you can lose your soul, you're going to drag it to, you're going to drag the Holy Spirit into hell? I defy that logic. You couldn't send the Holy Spirit into hell any way or form and if you can't send the Holy Spirit to hell how can you say send a Christian that has that Holy Spirit abiding in him into hell when he's going to dwell in you forever no checkout time again rest or dwell the Holy Spirit the comfort is going to dwell in me he's going to rest in me to continue permanently. That's Webster's has given us a definition of verse 16 forever. 
We don't need to go any further with, with the definition. We'll stick with the Bible now. I have an indwelling, abiding of the third member of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit that dwells in me. How's that? Now, chapter 15, 10. 15, 10. If ye keep my commandments, remember the doctrine, whosoever keepeth the doctrine of Christ, John, 3 John 8. Commands and doctrine, the teaching, is what Jesus says for us to do. If you keep, and then John said, or you don't keep it. Now look how what Jesus is going to say matches what what John I keep wanting to say Paul what John says in in Second John verse nine it matches Scripture with Scripture John says doctrine Jesus says commandment if you keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love abiding. How do you abide in the love of Jesus Christ? By doing what he tells you to do. Don't tell me if Jesus loves you and you don't do what he tells you to do. You defy scripture. You defy the doctrine and you're going to say that Jesus loves you. That's a bunch of crock. That is bull. That's a lie out of hell, out of Satan's mouth. Because you got to do what Jesus said to get his love. Now, you can't lose salvation. But you can postpone the love. Jesus loves them that listen to him. It says, If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Now, Jesus said, the Father loved me because I did everything he told me to do. Jesus said to the disciples and the Christians, I will love you and abide in love with you if you do what I tell you to do. And if you do what Jesus tells you to do, which is Jesus done, he's our great example, then when we follow Jesus, we get his love then we get the love of the Father. Now, anybody remember what the fruit of the Spirit is? Galatians? One of the fruit is love. So when we abide in the doctrine, when we do what Jesus tells us to do, we've got the love of the Son, Jesus Christ, in our life. Then we have the God the Father's love through the Son, to us for obeying and then the Holy Spirit that abides in us when we do right he produces one of his fruit which is called love there is none of that in disobedience we're gonna to get to that in a minute these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Another spirit, Holy Spirit fruit is joy. How do you get joy? How do you get love, the fruit of the Holy Spirit? By doing what God, Jesus Christ, the scriptures tells you to do. It's that simple. It's not hard at all. Now, you try to tell me if I disobey God and I don't do right, he doesn't love me. No. I'm not saying that. Let's go to Hebrews. This is the only way I can describe it. Hebrews 12 or 13. 12, I believe it is. 12. Verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chasing of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scorneth every son 
that he which whom he receiveth. Endure chasing, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chases not? That fatherly love, I am a child of God by the gospel of Jesus Christ. God is my father. He has adopted me. Now, the Bible records, and when I do wrong, if God doesn't chastise me, if he doesn't rebuke me, he's not a loving father. And when he does rebuke me, when he does punish me for my wrong, it says he still loves me. He loves me enough to chastise me. The love is not going. To, the love is still there as a father. But what is it when a child has done wrong? There's a brokenness there. There is that transgression as a fence. The father is on the one side, holiness, and the child is on the on the other side, offense and wickedness. There's a fence. There's a line between you and God. You're not pleasing him. And you deserve punishment. And yet the punishment you get from God is still the love of God. But if you obey and do what God has told us to do through his word, rightly dividing, studying, if you please God, you have a loving fellowship together. And when you don't, and you step out, and you rebel, you don't have that fellowship. You have sin. You have disappointed your father. Still loves you. But something's in the way of that love. When a child does wrong, if I were to take a tool of my father and break it, well, my father still loves me, but he's a little upset with me. And he's either going to scold me, punish me, or make me pay for it. And then once it's been remedied, once it has been dealt with, once the punishment has been come to the conclusion, then we can return to that love and fellowship together. But in the act of disobeying, there's love, but there's correction. And it's not pleasing to the child, and it's not pleasing to the father for correction. It saddens both of them. It brings tears to the both of them. That's not love and joy. Punishing your children is not joyful. So we've got to obey God our Father to, for Him to be pleased with, to have joy, to have further love. See, people, God is love. Yeah, but He's also a holy God too. And He'll beat your behind if you need it. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll put you off in the lake of fire which burneth forever. That'll be your eternal punishment. Thank God as a child of God, I get a temporal punishment. And who knows what that can be in a, in a Christian's life. But to know that whether God takes my money away, whether God takes some of my health away, whatever he does when I've been bad, I still know I have the love of God. And the love of God is why he's chastised for me to do good, to obey. But if I abide in what Christ has commanded me to do, the love is still there, the Holy Spirit is still producing love, and he's still producing joy, and God is pleased. Disobey and sin and joy pulls away. You've got fear, you know. And there's no joy in fear. The Holy Spirit abides in the Christian forever. He remains. He continues. Abiding in Christ is a preference. Choosing that which is right produces the fruit. Let's go back to John 15. It produces fruit. John 15. When you do what Christ wants you to do, there's so much benefit. There's more benefits than disobeying. John 15. 
think that's the next verse we want. John 15, 5. I am the vine, Jesus Christ speaking. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. Christ is the vine. We have been engrafted by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ into that vine. Once that, once that branch becomes part of the vine, you can't cut it away. God will not allow it. Now, you may be a dead branch, absolutely producing no nothing at all, just you're saved, you're in Christ, that's it, boom. Or you may be dead, absent from the body and present with the Lord. You're still in the vine. We abide in him as he is life. There is no death. Jesus told the Pharisees, listen, Abraham and I, they're not dead. They're alive. They're well. Moses spoke to, to Jesus and Elijah. And Moses was dead. No, he wasn't dead many years. He was still very much alive. Be absent from the body and present with the Lord. We abide in Christ. And when we abide in Christ, not only we get fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience. And the nine fruits of the Spirit that we get, if we do what's right, we get the love of Jesus Christ. If, if we do right, we get the love of God in our life. If we do right, we also produce fruit in our life. By doing right. By abiding. Abiding in the doctrine of Christ. As John said in 9. As Jesus said. If you obey my command. We get, Lord, we get love. We get joy. We get peace. And we produce fruit. Christian. We produce fruit amongst Christians. They learn. Your testimony may be for another Christian to go on. Your testimony may be for a lost person to say. Hey you got something I ain't got. I want it. By staying and doing what Jesus Christ wants us to do. Now let's take, I got two parents. A mother and a father. I'm their son. And I choose one day say, hey, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm living somewhere else. I'm not living underneath your roof. I'm still their child. I am still their son, even though I'm somewhere else. I am not enjoying their benefits no more. I'm off the benefits of somebody else. But I'm still their child. I'm a child of God and like demons. If I go to Thessalonica and say, see you later, God, I'm going on my own. I'm going in the world. I Demas is still God's. But he has taken up abiding somewhere else he has moved out from god still a son somewhere else where he ought not to belong and the fruit dies the holy spirit gets quenched that fruit stops the love of god dwindles well, god still loves them but after chastising him, after rebuking him, and Demas doesn't get right, and then you know what? The love's, he's my son, but I'm very ashamed of him. He's my son, but let's not talk about him. I don't want to have anything to do with that idiot. He's my son, yeah, but I don't have anything to do with him. Still my son. Just won't get right. Won't make things right. But he's my son. You can't lose the sonship, but you can lose the fellowship. You can lose the joy. You can lose the peace. You can lose the fruit bearing. You can lose, lose the love. Better to dwell in Christ. The love leaves when you choose to do wrong. It's your free will to stay under God and in obedience or I run off to the pig pie to dwell with the pigs and start eating with the pigs and not getting no blessings of the Father. You've got a choice. It ain't God ain't going to force you. Satan ain't going to force you. 
Yes, Satan will not force you to do wrong. He'll put it out there for you. It's your choice. Am I going to live in God's house or am I going to live in a pigsty? And the son that God loves is the one that comes from the pigsty and says, Father, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me a servant. Let me deal out in the field hands. I am sorry. And then the love of the father returns. So see, the love is still there even when you have failed. It can come back when you get right with the Father. Getting right with God the Father deals with your abiding in Him to get the precious, great substance from God. But abiding out of the doctrine of Christ. John says you have not God. We'll look at that further. Let's go now to... 1 Corinthians 3.14 1 Corinthians 3.14 This is a powerful message. This is meat. This is something that's not preached in churches. Many churches. A lot of churches. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon he shall receive a reward. Now I think this is going to be the stopping place it usually is. This is the judgment seat of Christ that we've studied. Go back and find the, the 45 lessons. They're all entitled. They're all great. They're all for your benefit. The judgment seat of Christ now we find abiding. We're going to go to 12. Now if any man build upon this foundation, Jesus Christ, verse 11. Start verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You better have Jesus Christ, or you ain't saved. No Jesus Christ, no salvation. No Jesus Christ, no Christian. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, Jesus Christ, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble, that's your entire life, those six items. That is waking. That's sleep. That's driving. That's walking. That's your labor. That's your resting. That's your father. That's your motherhood. That's your being a brother. That you being a sister. That being a pet owner. That doing gardening. That everything hobbies. That's your money. That's your time. That is everything you have done. You have seen a, a tombstone. The birth date. The end date. <coughs> <coughs> Birth and death. You know that dash? That dash in your life is gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. Everything from the day that you were saved, born again, to the day you die or rapture are going to be judged. Everything before you were saved, the day that you were saved to the day you were born, is under the blood. You will be judged on your salvation to death or rapture. And everything will be put into six categories. And we've already studied that. Go back and get it. Every man's work shall be manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. God is going to put your works to fire, not you. Gold, silver, precious stones remain. Wood, hay, or stubble burn. Plain and simple. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, gold, silver, precious stone. Now this verse matches 2 John 8 rewards. Look at that. Scripture with scripture. If you abide in Christ as a foundation and your work abides, you get a reward. And John says, don't lose that reward. Whosoever transgresses, how do you lose rewards? You transgress. You do not obey Christ's doctrine. You do not obey the commandment of Christ. That's called transgression. When you disobey God and his word, study to show thyself approved of the earth. God, right, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When you disobey God, you transgress, and you are in danger of losing your reward, not your soul. And a, go back, a Christian can earn reward. And abiding here is your works. 
everything for God, missionaries, tithing, gospel tracts, witnessing, public ministry, your prayers, your Bible reading, your church attendance, everything you've done for Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ alone. Gold, silver, precious stone. Your works abide in Christ, abide the day you are rewarded. How's that? You can have the love of Christ abiding in you. You can have Christ abiding in you. You can have the Holy Spirit abiding in you. And you can get love. You can get joy. You can get peace. You can get love of the God the Father. And you can get fruit. And you can get rewards. If you choose this day where you're going to abide and you stay there and don't be a demon. Paul said, I have finished my walk. I have finished my course. I am done. I have finished faithful. That's abiding. 2 Timothy 4. Demas is an example of not abiding. And we're coming to an end of time here again. And I think we're going to stop right there for now. That's a good place to stop. you got to choose today. My final words. Are you going to serve Jesus Christ to the day of the rapture to your death? And you're going to flimsy. You're going to flip-flop. You're going to fail. You're going to sin. You're going to do right. You're going to do good. You're going to please God. You're not going to please God. Upon that, if you choose to do right and live for God, that's abiding. You find out what God expects from you and you do it. And the result will be love, joy, peace, fruits, and rewards. And I've got to end for the sake of time.